Tonight is the night. It is YMH Live. Get your tickets right now, livestream.ymhstudios.com. We got Danny Brown, Tim Dillon, incredible content we shot, a super heavy segment, and a whole lot more. Get your tickets right now. You can watch for a whole week and a half. You Italian? Yeah, I used to get that all the time. Italian? You Italian? No, and they're like, oh, all right. Ah, uh, they go, you sure? Yeah. You sure? I, a lot of people, they are. They don't know it. They don't know it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because you get really fast. You might be from the north. You're yeah, from the north. You got, you got the kind of light eyes. Yeah. Northern Italian. Northern Italian. These are the smart ones. Hey, this next guy, he's northern Italian. Yeah. This guy's got the money. He took it off from the Sicilians. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. Do you need a new mattress? Go to sattva.com slash the shit now for $200 off the next purchase of your Sattva mattress. It's the shit. Welcome back to another episode of your mom's house. As always, my lovely co-host is with me, Christina P. Hey. You look as beautiful as ever. I'm looking forward to all your chiming in this episode. All right. It's a nice sweater. You're welcome. All right. Also, coming back to the show, uh, we're always excited to see the very funny and the very talented Johnny Pemberton, everybody. He's here. He's here. Let hey, him... it's me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hey, Tom. For girls for pussy. What's up, Johnny? Um, Great to be here. With, yeah. Uh, that's like a steel wool sweater, actually. If oh, I didn't, yeah. I guess. That's from, from one of her favorite designers. What's the name? What's that? <laughs> um, before... I go any further, I want to point mm. out that you can see Johnny performing his solo show at the Elysian Theater July 20th, uh, July 23rd. He'll be at Croc, the Crocodile? The Crocodile. In Seattle. Seattle. And July 24th, Helium in Portland. Uh, those are, that's exciting. It's going to be fun stuff. Hell yeah. Very fun. Uh, Helium, that's a great club. It's great. I like it a lot. All those Helium clubs are so good. They're well run, well designed. Yeah. They look like clean and efficient. And um, yeah, they do a good job, man. Like they the like aliens. comedy. I feel like all there's always people who work there who come in on their days off. I like I, I can't imagine it's crazy going to work on I my day off. Remember, somewhere. like when they started, when Helium was started, and then I would I'd be working, you know, other chains. And sometimes you're like, I feel like nobody here likes comedy, um, mm -hmm. including the audience. And then first time I did Helium, I think it might have it might have been like Buffalo, and I was like not knowing what to expect. And the shows were like fucking rock shows. It yeah. was amazing. They were great. They were great. They get excited. They get stoked. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, there's a lot uh, I want to talk about with you, but cool, man. to start the show, I think it's always good <sighs> to play go. a little clip. Here we go. But dating a woman with kids presents several problems. <laughs> Let me explain. How many of you guys have dated a woman with kids and realized you cannot go out with that woman whenever you want to go out because she needs a babysitter? How many of you guys have been able to go out with a woman anytime you damn want and she got kids? Because she don't care about a babysitter. She'll even leave them kids at home while she go out to get her hair done and burn the house down and kill the kids. I don't say no names, but it has happened. <laughs> yeah, don't say names. <laughs> don't bring anyone mother into this. Welcome to your mom's house. I don't want to say no names. <laughs> That's the good part. Yeah, welcome in. Gonna take a big old dump on Tom's head. Yeah. She burned on the house with the kids in it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man, it sucks when you're fucking dating a chick and then she uh, burns the house down with her kids in it. I hate that. It's <laughs> happened to me so many times. I have to ha had to stop dating them, you know? Yeah. You have to stop dating them when they burn the house down, especially yeah. with the kids. With the kids, man. It's one thing if they just burn the house down, but with the kids, then it's like, that's just a, what do you call it? It's a deal breaker. It's a deal breaker. And also, like, even let's say you don't break up with her. Mm -hmm. It's such like a mood killer to be out. Like the next time you're like, she's crying about it. She's like, oh, we're out right now. 
You know what this reminds me of? This is the last time. We went out mm -hmm. and my kids died in the fire. Yep. And you're like, oh. You're like, you should have a babysitter. She was yeah. like, you know. Thought the dog would be fine. Yeah. She's three. I, mean, I thought she could do stuff by herself. And you're like, yeah, I get it. That's yeah. the old style. The old style babysitters like in the like in the twenties, you know? Yeah. Like the five year old watching the baby. Yeah. That really was. That's yeah. so wild. Yeah, my parents did not leave us alone for I mean, I wanna say we had babysitters through uh, probably into I think my older sister had to be like in high school. I had babysitters like 15, 16 or something. Oh, well, I babysitters are older than me. They were younger than me. Younger not, than you? Not for me, but for my little brother and sister. But I was around and like, this is weird. Didn't like that. How old were you? I don't know. I was probably like maybe 17, something like that. And a babysitter came over who was like 14? Um, <laughs> definitely my age or younger, yeah. And it was a, a girl? Of course. Yeah. I know you can't yeah. have a male watch anybody. God, that's not weird. Kind of it is that. weird. Like even um, yeah, we got swimming lessons for the youngest, uh, our youngest kid, and Christina was like, "Oh, I got um, a swimming teacher to come over," and I go, "It's a girl, right?" And she's like, "Yeah, obviously." I was oh, like, yeah. Well, I had a male swimming instructor. Well, we just were, didn't want him to get a boner and try to touch yeah. the kid. You know. I guess that's the case. If you have them privately, you have a group class. It's different because they're no, not going to try anything. In a I group remember in high school. Uh, um, a friend's mother said, she goes, you know, the daughter was getting tennis lessons. She goes, and I noticed the, the instructor had an erection. How do like, you do that? I don't know. I don't know. I was like, come on. She was like, I swear. She goes, that was it, you know. But was, how old was he teaching? What, what kind of kids? How old? It was, he was giving a lesson to her daughter. I don't know how. Was her daughter like, I eh, it doesn't matter. She would, yep. she would be topless. She had like a nice rack. And she okay, was so it was like a private... Private club. It was a private, like, sexual club. I was like, oh. Oh, you're supposed to have an erection, you know? But that's what he's paid for is not to have an erection, right. to make it so it's a natural thing, just a natural, Let her topless just be free. class. Yeah. Like naked yoga. Exactly. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, it's okay to get a boner in naked yoga. Is it? Yeah. I saw something about it. And they said it's, if you get a, they didn't say it's okay to get a boner, but they're like, whatever happens, if you, if you become aroused, it's. Um, Ignore it. Right? Yeah. You just act like it's nothing because it's just the body. So. The body's doing stuff. You could go on there and just be. Full, full steam. Can you jack off? <laughs> That's natural. I wonder if you could. Maybe if you yeah. were able to do it with your legs, like you were able to like yeah. use your feet yeah. to do it, I bet they would probably let it fly. Ay, ay, ay! Yeah, it'd be nice. <laughs> God, yeah. I can't. I mean, wow. I saw those uh, naked yoga, but it was just for men. I was like, this is just guys trying to fuck each other. That's all this is. Yeah, that sounds like it's The gays are always sneaky. We're on to you. We know you're trying to fuck. Well, they are the sneakiest. Always yeah. have been. Yeah. Oh, this is just our, uh, we have a new kayaking group. And like, okay, sure. And then they pull the kayak up on shore and you guys butt fuck. We know how this goes. Yeah. Kayaks. Um, so this guy, by the way, I'm of a, a very big fan. Um, I this guess, guy right here? Morning. Yeah. So his name is Tommy Sotomayor. Uh, he's an American radio host, internet talk show host. Uh, he uses he does YouTube videos and he's a men's rights activist. Oh, there you go. Um, I, 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 every time I see his name, I see the word tits. It looks like his name's like Tits Mayor. Um, he should be the mayor of tits. Yeah, it does look like that. This is a response to a previous video about the same topic where he received a lot of hate for it. So he's, uh, I guess, doubling down. Um, but I love these um, personalities that do videos about you know, what you should be looking for and, mm -hmm. and, and dating advice in general. If you are a mother and I can get a hold of you at any time and see you at any time, that's a problem. If you are a mother and I can't get a hold of you and see you anytime, that also is a problem. I don't want to raise another man's seed. Black men are the only men on the planet who are typically always raising somebody else's kid. Nah, come on. Think about the Lion Kingdom. In the Lion Kingdom, if a lion comes into a pride and he sees that, well, the lioness has little cubs, I'm going to come in and get the lioness. And guess what I'm going to do with the lion, the, the lion cubs? Yeah, I'm going to offer them. <laughs> See, a lion will go ahead and take care of them because he knows those are not his kids and they may grow up to cause a problem. I hope that you're suggesting to do the same with people. <laughs> like how they have the tracking shot. It yeah, makes it nice and elegant. It does. Uh... Very filmic. Yeah, kids can grow up to be a problem, especially someone else's kids. That's true. Yeah, you got to take care of them before they can take care of you. That's right. That's the key. 
That's true. Because once little Jimmy can uh, pick up a hammer, you can't go to sleep in that person's house. That's so true. Yeah. You got you to gotta stay on top of these things. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, he didn't actually say to do it, but he was like, that does make sense when a lion does it. Now, this is endorsed by Apple Computers, right? That's what this is? I think so. I think so. This is Apple's official statement. <laughs> yeah. That uh, can children... We, can we get a response from Apple on this? <laughs> yeah. And then what happened? It's your job to straighten her up, make her an honest woman, as one woman who had kids said. I'm so thankful for my husband because he took on my kids and made me an honest woman. Well, you was a liar before you met him? You was a cheat? Explain this honest woman thing, and I can't make you that. I want a woman that's honest when I first meet her. Okay. Fair enough. Where is this guy? I don't know. Looks like he's in like Chatsworth or something in the high desert up there. Is that a water slide? That's a water slide. This looks like a house that's not quite finished. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? yeah, it does. Like, it does look like, like that. Like, uh, we're going to... We got a deal. And he's like thrilled at the waterfall aspect. Oh, but yeah. then somebody couldn't convince him like, hey, man, audio wise, it's not going to be the best. He's like, I don't give a shit. It's a nice waterfall. The, the production See, I value. I give information that I would give to my kid, not information I would give to you whores and you dudes <laughs> who sleep with whores. Y'all can do whatever you want to do. But I give uh, good advice because it's good advice. And the best way for us to start a black community, a strong one, is for men to be with the women who they have kids by. Right. Am I with them? Nope. Is that the point? Yes. Look at me. I ain't shit either. That's the point. Only dudes that ain't shit will sit around and sleep with women who got kids by other people. What? I don't, <laughs> I don't follow any of this now. Any dudes who ain't shit would only... I, I lost... Yeah, yeah. That was like a, a logic problem. Yeah. But I actually tell you something. I really appreciate it. That was kind of fun. Only... How about me? Nope. But if only dudes that ain't shit will sleep with someone who ain't got those... What? <laughs> This guy's from a different era. I fucking love it. Mm -hmm. I really love how terrible that logo is in the bottom right, too. That is such yeah. garbage. And That's, like, t tis so, t it just, it's bad. Tis so, one more, hold on. Maybe we could all just be more responsible with our reproductive systems and say, unless I plan on being with him slash her, I'll protect myself. That's, that's and not it just that shows crazy. me how irresponsible a woman is because she got like, 31 damn flavors of birth control. Baskin Robbins is envious what? of all the ways that a woman can, get, can stop having a baby. Then even if they don't do that, they can do stuff afterwards. You have no excuse to have a baby by a dude you ain't with or don't plan on being with. Come on now. This feels very open mic. Like that joke, the, uh, the Baskin Robbins 31 Third flavors. Of, yeah. That's good. one that probably killed once. But you know what? This, um, you gotta, it's a keeper. <laughs> there's always those dudes at open mics who are like, wildly confident and you're yeah. like god like how does he feel so good about this stuff <laughs> you can just oh, tell man. he's so confident now i want to see how much hate i get on this and for any woman he's who has fun. a problem with this idea of men who don't have kids shouldn't they when i got them and i still don't want them <laughs> anybody who has a problem with that please give me a real good reason not because i'm black as hell and ashy and crispy not because i'm fuck? gay no <laughs> give me a good reason why you would encourage a man to date a woman right. who has kids by somebody else. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Confidence. He's so confident. I saw a guy one time open mic in New Orleans. This is years ago. We were shooting 21 Jump Street. This guy comes on. You know, he bombs, like totally bombs. But then he had, he had an iPad, early days of iPad. And he said, um, that's okay. I'm just going to leave here with my iPad, brand new iPad. Fuck y'all. I'm leaving. got my iPad here. <laughs> It's like he had the iPad, so yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if you, you kill. guys ain't shit. Yeah. I got an iPad. Just carried it around, brought it onto the stage, didn't even use it, just had the iPad there yeah. to talk about. Those are so those were could be so rough. The uh yeah. I, actually I think I have a very low um tolerance for I had it too. For like, you know, like hey, let's sit around and watch yeah. bad shit. I was like, I can't really do it, man. I never really did it because of that reason. Because yeah. I felt like it wasn't a good way to find out if something's funny. Yeah. Because if it does really well, it's just it's not normal people laughing. And mm -mm. if it doesn't, it's also the same thing. It's I like, called it um, um, doing only meaningful sets. I was like, is this is it meaningful? Yeah. Meaning, like, if you go here, are you getting truly something out of it? Because right. if it's like fucking whack jobs you're like this this is a point it's just the exercise of walking up there i guess sometimes it's nice to uh to watch people who are crazy 
Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah. But or again, like get your mic tech. I also down. want them to be doing real short sets. Yeah. I don't want to watch that shit for like eight minutes. I want it to be two. Should be three. Yeah. Three's the best. Yeah, three, three or four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. So fucking insane. <laughs> so crazy. I forgot about some of those guys. They're just they're still out there, probably all of them. Right? All the guys who are super crazy. Yeah. Open mic dudes. The wildest ones would be I remember like doing just like some mics and some real entry level bringer shows and then You'd see a guy and they're like, yeah, he's been doing this 15 years. You're like, he's been doing this 15 years? Yeah. And then now he's doing it like 30 or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like still around. You're like, he's still doing it? Sometimes it's the same set. You're like, oh, that's why this person is crazy. You remember that lady, Francesca Hilton? She used to hang out at the comedy store. Big lady, big blonde lady. Um, she's, I don't know if she's alive anymore, but she claimed to be the other aunt of the, the Hilton sisters. And she would do the same set. When I first started, I was doing weird little bringer shows in the belly room at the comedy store. And she would go up. I mean, I'd go up, you know, three hours after everybody. I'm sitting around like, I just didn't know any better, you know? Yeah. But she would go up and she would do the same thing every time. She would just talk about, she was so crazy though. So, what would she so, talk about? She would just talk about herself. Like, I, like, like so I'm the, uh, I'm the other Hilton sister. I'm the, uh, the one who you don't know about and. She was. She had that kind of look in her eyes, you know, the crazy look, where you you're not really looking at somebody. Yeah. That kind of thing, and so she was interesting to watch, but it was also it felt like you were in like a weird David Lynch, like fever dream because it's super late. You're in the belly room, and it felt this lady keeps saying the same thing over and over again. And I gave her the light, and she just ignores it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. She was funny, in a observable way. Yeah, there was a there was a regular crew of crazies that you would see at a lot of those yeah. in LA. If you were LA, same kind of wacky dudes. They come out just to hear themselves talk a lot of times. Yeah. They have like a thing where like the tires, why are tires the price they are? It's ridiculous. They just complain about yeah. something every week. Having to drop what you're doing to make a run to the post office is a major pain, especially when you've got important things to do. So stop mailing and shipping the hard way. Stamps.com is your 24-7 post office that you can access from anywhere. Skip the headache with Stamps.com. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office services you need right from your computer. You get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. Whether you're an office sending invoices, an Etsy shop sending your products, or a warehouse shipping out orders makes mailing and shipping a breeze. All you need is your regular computer and printer, no special supplies or equipment. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. Don't mail and ship the hard way. Sign up with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash mom for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash mom. This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Masterworks. Masterworks is a platform that allows anyone to invest in valuable artwork. What a cool way to invest. High rollers have been investing in alternative assets like artwork to diversify their portfolios for decades. And with Masterworks, anyone can buy and sell the shares they have in artwork worth millions. Artists like Picasso, Monet, Andy Warhol, and more. Contemporary art prices outpaced the S&P 500 total return from 1995 to 2020 by 164%. This is a market that is skyrocketing. And it's such a unique way to invest. Contemporary art has a price appreciation of 23% on average when inflation is above 3%. Cool way to invest your money. Masterworks has securitized over $500 million worth of contemporary art. Our viewers can skip their wait list. Go to masterworks.art slash mom. See important regulation A disclosures at masterworks.io slash CD. That's masterworks dot art slash m o m there was that italian duo those oh. two guys oh wait yeah uh J is it not jimmy and joey or joey? something like that yeah 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 and yeah they were those, like those guys like real um, fucking the meatballs of comedy yeah i the first character i ever did was a character based on those guys 
And I didn't know that one of those guys owned like that IP. The meatballs of comedy? A and the Jimmy and Joey. So right. there was like one of them would be, it was like, I, I created this and he would like swap out a Joey. He's like, it's just not working with you. And he's a new Joey. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Those guys, I forgot about those guys. The meat, the meatballs of comedy tour. Yeah. They talk about doing cruise ships and stuff. Yeah, I fucking, I just remember Ooh. seeing them at some, is, is this still a thing? Are they? White shoes. They wear white shoes, right? I'm trying to remember. There he is, right? So the guy, yeah, yeah the guy on the right, it was, it's his thing. And he would, he would try different people in the other role. Like the Sportsman's Lodge, I think they would do stuff with the Sportsman's, yeah. right? Yes. Those guys, the Meatballs of Comedy Tour. Yeah. I think I would say I was in Meatballs. I would do this character where I'd go up and say, I'm Joey Spilicone, part of the Meatballs of Comedy, and I would do like all these terrible cruise jokes and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to see those guys everywhere, man. I'm surprised they didn't come try to kick my ass. Probably. Well, if they didn't hear about it, so thank you. You don't own the IP. You know what that is? It's, you claim to be the freaking Meatballs of Comedy here? Yeah. <laughs> get your ball. Get your meatballs out. We're going to cut them off. <laughs> cut those meatballs off. A lot of attitude. That's the thing you gotta have. Latitude. Yeah. You gotta have, you, know, you, you gotta go in there. You gotta tell me. You gotta walk in there. Okay. You gotta walk in and be like, okay, I own this place. Okay. Yeah. I own the You joint. walk in there. You don't. You don't take no crap from nobody. There's number one. Number one. Don't take no crap from nobody. Number two. You gotta have white shoes. White shoes are big. Nice white shoes. Three sizes too big. Okay. Yeah. You want that? So it looks like you got a big old dingaling going on down there. You know, big old fucking white shoes. And you gotta talk about how Italian you are. You gotta talk about the, mama. You gotta go Italian. ah. Ah, <laughs> there's no better food than Italian food. Everywhere I go, I go everywhere. They say to me, Joey, the best food's Italian food. How do you do it? <laughs> How did you guys do it? <laughs> and I tell you, it's Italian secret. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Kill you. The, hey, whole, crowd, the whole crowd. The whole crowd. Have to kill you. Yeah. All right. All right. This next Shit. guy, you're gonna love him. <laughs> This next guy coming up, you're gonna love him. This guy is Tom Sejura. Yeah, he's a, a great you wait, guy. You Italian? And then you know, be, you Italian? Yeah, I used to get that all you the time. Italian? You Italian? No, and they're like, oh, all right. Ah, uh, they go. You sure? Yeah. You sure? I, a lot of people, they are. They don't know it. They don't know it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because you get really fast. You might be from the north. You're you from got, the north. You got, you got the kind of light eyes. Yeah. Northern Italian. Northern Italian. These are the smart ones. Hey, this next guy, he's northern Italian. Yeah. This guy's got the money. He took it off from the Sicilians. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Those fucking dudes. God damn, I haven't thought about that in forever. Yeah, and then, oh man. Then there was people, I remember there was guys who would just do sets hammered. <laughs> hammered. Yeah. That was, So they would go there, you'd sign up, everyone would be so nervous, just trying to do well. I was so nervous. Yeah. I was so nervous too, man. I mean, I would, mm -hmm. I would have that thing early on. If we had a show tomorrow. Right. And it was like. Oh, it starts. Well, I'm saying like tonight. I'd be nervous. And then tomorrow at like 5 a.m., <laughs> I would shoot up out of bed, be like, <gasps> like feel panic. Oh, I didn't have that. Oh, yeah. Damn. I would feel real panic. Um, yeah. I mean, it faded like. The yeah, longer, as time but, goes on, yeah, what you but, do. And then I would book a weekend opening at the in one of the improvs. Mm -hmm. Man, that would. All day, I would just be like. Can't writing, eat. Writing down the. Yeah. Can't eat, writing down the order of the set, being like, is that going to work? And, you know, just yeah. trying to trying to get to that 20 minute mark and just oh my god i remember having the first time i was supposed to do a headlining set was at florida state for this like alumni show that's right it was me like four other guys with alan havey included this was a long time ago and uh they're like everyone does 40 minutes and i thought this was normal and i'm you know trying to get i don't have 40 minutes but i can i can stretch it yeah so i'm standing there in the hotel over like the fucking washing machine for a couple hours because, you know, Brit's in the room. I'm pacing around. I think I got it. Then we get to the venue, and Alan is like, oh, no, no, we're not. No, that's not how it's going to work. Okay, you do 20, you do 15, and I'll do like 30. And they're like, okay, sure. Was that a huge relief then? Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. yeah. And he's totally right. They're not going to have fucking four guys do, do 40, 40 minutes. Yeah, it's too much. Oh, it was great. Yeah, I, I mean, I the, the time that I almost fucking shit was... I got booked to be the warm up audience warm up through oh, a man. at Last Comic Standing. I think oh okay. Man, this is one of the, this is like I can I wish I could bottle up this panic and sell it to people. Okay. 
just make deer run away and stuff like yeah. that? I'm I'm a couple of years into stand up. I'm yeah. like um I started let's see, I'm three years in. So I have I can do at this point, because I'm working a bit, I can do like twenty of like uh, decent stuff, yeah. you know. So I get there and this is I forget if this was the first taping or not. That part I don't remember. It may have it may have been. But I get out there and they're like, all right. Um, just go out there and I'm like, okay, how long? And they're like, oh, I think we'll be ready in like 15 minutes. I'm like, great. Perfect. So I go out there, I run my set and you know, it goes fine. Like it gets laughs and then they're like, ready to go. I'm like, ready. Yep. And they're like, come on back. Start taping the show. <clears throat> they're like, cut. And they're like, all right, uh, can you go back out there? I'm like, sure. I'm like, what do I need to do? They go, well, we need to reset the cameras. So something was like not aligned. Right. Yeah. So, you know, just go out there and um, we'll be ready, you know, when we're ready. I go, well, how long do you think it'll be? And they're like, probably like 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah. And I'm like, what? What the fuck? And That's I go, a long time. Well, what am I supposed to do for 40 minutes? And the guy goes, hey, man, we, I don't know. We hired you. I don't know. I'm like a kid, basically, you know? Yeah. And I go, uh, so I start scrambling. I, I, I like grab one of the producers. I go, hey, man, I just did like basically what I have, you know? I, I don't have 40 more minutes of stand up. Right. What do you want me to do? He's like, well, I don't know. I go, T-shirts. Yeah. Do you have any, do you have anything I can give away? I go, what about music? Can you play music? And they're like, yeah, we can do that. So then I do T-shirts and then I have a dance contest on stage. That's pretty good. Dance contest. Yeah. And I bring up audience members and I make them dance. And it was the only, I mean, and, but the panic I felt when I was going to go back out was other level. Like I can't imagine. 40, he's like, do 40 more minutes. I'm like, that doesn't exist, man. I don't have I don't want to do 40 minutes now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was like, well, first of all, the only thing I have left is completely vulgar. Because at the time, they're like, you yeah. have to work this clean. You know, you had this audience going. It was terrifying. Because that's all it was. It was terrifying. That sounds like the first time I ever did stand-up, the first time in LA I ever did stand-up was doing warm-up for like a web talk show. Yeah. And I thought it was, it was a paid audience because it was for this uh, promotional thing, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, they're going to be a paid audience? Oh, that means they're going to be extra good. Oh. And it was so, it was so incredibly, it was such a hard, incredible bomb. I did like, made, not even 10 minutes, probably like seven minutes of material I worked on a bunch. I bombed so hard that no one would make eye contact with me the rest of the day. It yeah. was bad. Oh, yeah. I told another comic about this, like a much older guy that I did that. And he was like, are you kidding me? Why would you ever think you can do warm up? God, he worked for Mad TV. He was like, "We have people come out and do like prank phone calls and like shoot T-shirt cannons and stuff. We don't have comedians. We have like psychos come out yeah, and run yeah. around and stuff." So that made me feel better, but I was so terrible. I bombed so hard at. Um, you remember Carson Palmer? He was the quarterback for the Bengals. He mm -hmm. had a private event in Orange County. Oh shit! And they go, they the like a few days before. I get a call from the improv. One of the people that works there was like, hey, you know, you're from Cincinnati and Carson Palmer's having this event in Orange County. Um, they are interested in having you maybe host the event. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. And they go, they're going to come out to the show tonight. So a couple of them, like his reps. At the improv. They came to the Irvine Improv and they watched me and they were like, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Like, because they just saw me at a stand-up show. Right. So they go, yeah, the event's like, you know, Friday and it's at this restaurant like a like a cool oc yeah. kind of swanky <laughs> restaurant i'm like i'm like okay i'm like is there a stage like oh yeah there's a stage and so i get there and there's like 200 and some people packed into this room Bengals. uh it's a lot of football players but it's also just like um people that you know kind of high like high well to do like front office front office money people yeah and like like ritzy oc people and they're all just mingling. So like when you walk in the room, you're like, oh, there's a party. Everyone's like, all you can hear is like the noise of a bunch of people right. talking. I'm like, all right. And we're just kind of waiting around, waiting around. And I plan out in my head what I'm going to do. So then I go, hey, uh, they go, you ready to do it? I go, yeah. And I get ready to go up and I go, how are we, um, how are we going to get them to like oh, can I stop guess? talking? There's no mic? There's a mic. Okay. There's a mic. <laughs> I go, how do we get them to stop talking? He goes, isn't that up to you? And I go, well, no, I'm going to perform. But like, they're all just mingling. mingling. And the guy's like, he's basically like, I don't know, man. So I'm like, all right. 
So the guy in like the booth goes, give it up for your host. When I'm not exaggerating when I tell you nobody stopped talking. <laughs> like no nobody. And yeah. I actually thought when I got up there, I was like, oh, this will just like take a minute, like yeah. as they figure it out. Nothing. To the point where at one point I go, I'm like, hey guys, are you serious right now? Like I was actually like yeah. kind of a, like a, upset. I was like, guys, this has started. Hello. It's like doing a bar show or something. Dude, it was no wild. No one gives a shit. And finally there was like three people here that were like standing looking at And one was a kid. <laughs> so I started to perform to them. Yeah. And then I told the kid that I was Brett Favre. And he was like, oh, really? Like he had no idea what was going on. Um, but I remember getting off stage. Oh, then like I go. How long did you do? I, it had to have, I had to have gone short. Yeah. But probably like around 15 so that's the kind of thing where you got to send in a drunk. Yeah. You know, someone's drunk uncle who like made, gets everyone's name in 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. That's what they need. It's like a... It was such a disaster. And the funny thing was, I go, all right, um, well, thanks for not listening. You guys are terrible. I, got, I said all that stuff. And I go, let's, um, let's bring up Carson. And as and, he walked to the stage, everybody shut up and just turned and looked at the stage. And I was like, are you fucking serious? And then he went up there and said, just like, thanks for coming out to my event. Yeah. Um, before I went on stage, this is the part I left out, before I went on stage, one of his reps was like, hey, um, you know, thanks for doing this. Um, Carson uh, wants to uh, invite you to play golf in the uh, golf outing tomorrow too. And I okay. go, oh, really? And he goes, well, unless something fucking horrible wrong happens. And I was like, oh, so all right. So you didn't go golfing the next day, did you? I didn't go golfing the next day, yeah. They didn't, nobody hit me uh, up about it. It was such, it was such a bomb. It was a real fucking bomb. Dude. You know Colin Quinn's story about doing, a, I think it's De Niro's birthday party? <laughs> I think I heard part Oh, of that. that is so good. Because <laughs> yeah. it's Colin Quinn too. Yeah. And he, it's, he wasn't like a young guy. No. He was a veteran. And that's the kind of stuff, I don't know if I could ever do a private function unless they were to say, hey, just do whatever you want. And I would come in there and like light some fucking fireworks off. Yeah. <laughs> like... Act like yeah. a psychopath, and then maybe I don't know, not and, talk. And then you heard that like Robin Williams part of it. No, of the Colin Quinn story. Of the Colin Quinn story. Colin Quinn is doing God, is know. doing a stand up right. at De Niro's thing and bombing. Right, it's bombing in front of De Niro. In front of De Niro and all the guests, and Robin Williams is one of the guests. And Robin's at the time wife is like, get up there, go help him. Ooh, I don't remember. And that he part. can. He she's like, go, and he's like, no, no, no. So, so like in front, he's seeing Robin Williams' wife be like, "Go help him! He's dying up there." <laughs> oh, I don't know. Mm, huh. Mm. Oh, go on. Uh, yeah, my baby, give, give him a kiss. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, De Niro too is like gonna show no emotion. I mean, I wouldn't want to even look at him. Yeah. Can you imagine like going in an elevator? Uh, he just is like. Like, yeah. oh, ne no, next, I'll take, yeah. ne take stairs. <laughs> I'll, take, <laughs> I'll take stairs, Mr. Nero. Do you remember the very first episode of Jimmy Fallon hosting The Tonight Show? No. Was he the guest? He was the guest. And was he, he just giving him nothing? It was horrific. Oh, God. It was horrific. And then you had to go like, yeah, but why would you do this to hit to Jimmy? Yeah. Like, it's his first night. And he's like, you are such a great actor. And he's like. And, you know, he's just trying. He's trying to, like... Trying to get something going? Yeah. And it's, it's, it goes, it's so bad. Man, I don't know. I haven't seen that. That's weird. I remember it. I, I haven't seen it in forever. I just remember yeah. it. I remember at the time being like, oh, my God, this is so painful. De Niro. And, like, they clearly were like, well, book a huge name. It's yeah. your first night. And it was just... Should have booked, like, a, what's his name? The guy, um, the weirdo guy that Letterman used to have on all the time, the actor, Crispin Glover. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Crispin Glover on or some shit. Yeah. He would be yeah. all fucking... Weird as shit, yeah. Just keyed up and doing some high kicks. Yeah, dude. I got to get some Kratom going today. Um, have yeah. you taken that yet? I have taken it. What do you think? I don't love it. Um, I don't know. I find it, when I take it, it makes me sleep so hard. What do you mean, right away? No, not, not right away, like later. Isn't that good? No, because I don't want to sleep like so hard that when I wake up, I feel like I'm just woke up after flying to France or something. You know what I mean? You're describing a fucking perfect night to me. Really? You like waking up where you feel like you're jet lagged or something? No, no. I guess it doesn't have that effect on me. What I do just, you take it for? Just before workouts. Okay, you do? Like how much though? 
a vial. Oh, God. What does that mean, a vial? Like, how much is that? A fucking vial. I'm trying to think of the amount. It looks kind of like this, like the, um, like this size. You take it every time? No, not every time. How, how do you decide when to take it? I just feel like getting geeked out today. And so you feel like getting some me- extra set in, you know? Yeah. Getting a little extra pump. Go in there with like a little juice, yeah. Okay. Ah, so you have it like, what, a half hour before? Uh, that's about right, something How like that. How come you don't take like that, that workout supplements, the stuff that's like white flood, you know? <laughs> Or stuff, it's like deer ant, like deer face. <laughs> it's got like the fucking deer. It's like bleeding on the front. Ten point buck. Ten yeah. point buck. Make right. you get your fucking sack ripped. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, uh, well, I who, should. How did you even learn to take that stuff? <laughs> I just met a guy. <laughs> you, met, you met a guy, uh, what, by a bridge? It's yeah. Like, hey, man, I'm ripped. I don't have a home, but I'm ripped. You're, <laughs> you're not that far off. No, he, uh, he, he has a home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I just, I tried it and I was like, oh, okay. And I had a great workout on it. So it's a painkiller, essentially. I don't know. What it, is it? It is. Kratom? It's a painkiller. Because I, I know that it's we've definitely had, a painkiller. And it's, it's what people take who are trying to stop taking Oxy. Oh, really? Yeah. If you can't have access to regular withdrawal meds, you take, uh, it is indigenous to Thailand. Uh, it just fucks me up too much to take it regularly. To oh, it has like, opioid properties. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Stimulant like effect. That's what I'm talking about. Here's right. the thing. You know why I really like it? I just feel so confident on it. Um, I just walk around that. I'm like. Around the gym? Yeah. Well, I guess if it works, if it doesn't make you tired then. No, nah, I didn't really notice that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I've got a bunch of it. Is it addictive? It. it is addictive, right? Isn't everything though? True. Kind of. Maybe it's not metabolically addictive, or it doesn't make you like crash like hard, but it probably changes something. Definitely doesn't taste good. Oh, it's not supposed it's bitter. to. Bitter. I mean, it's like. I think it's good when stuff doesn't taste bad. Taste good, you know, because that way it's like, like, did you like the taste of Red Bull? It's kind of medicinal taste. I kind of love the taste of Red Bull. Red, really, I I only drank that for you. Can I tell you what I I also had for the very? What does it say here? Um. Is Kratom addictive? Is this from the Kratom.com site? No. Buy Kratom. Is Kratom addictive? Well, not really. Kratom may develop in as little as six months. Oh, oh causing symptoms comparable to opioid withdrawal. Comparable. It's just comparable. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, it just comp- got me if you're comparing. You could compare it if you want to. We don't compare it. Uh, At buykratom.com, we don't compare it to that. <laughs> we say that it's sort of like, imagine if you were to wait, eat a bunch of food, then stop eating food. Wait, scroll, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, 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 other way. Uh, make it big again. And scroll. A little more. Um, pause. That's a cute word for post-acute post- withdrawal syndrome. Oh, he has pause. Anxiety, depression, insomnia, experience. <laughs> But those, those are withdrawal symptoms for everything. That's yeah, that's like true. For any kind of drug, that's the same thing. Irritability, insomnia, yeah. anxiety. And it's like, it's not, I'm doing eight vials a day. It's not that crazy. Eight um, a day? No. <laughs> no. Like how many a week, you think? Uh, Twice, three dose. times? Uh, probably like two or three times, yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah. I'll try it, actually. Dude, I got the plug if you want the good stuff. You got the plug? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like a website or like a guy? See, you should not be getting it from a guy. You should get it from Try this shit a guy first. with a website. This guy has a site. Does it give you diarrhea? No. Not at all? No diarrhea. What about if you have like a green juice, do you get like, you know, not diarrhea, but you have like- uh, Loose bowels? I believe the word I always look out for in anything is um, detox. Oh, Detox is a code for diarrhea. I've really been in this last year. It took me about 43 years to go like, I should figure out what's going on. What do you mean? My digestive system. There's Um, something going on? Well, I mean like about like what, like what I should avoid, what irritates me and actually following this stuff. What did you figure out irritates? Uh, Egg yolks. Egg yolks. Yeah. A lot of sulfur in there. Um, You know, I try to like, I try to stick to the things now that don't give me any irritation at all. So, you know, like egg whites are fine for me. It seems like I do yogurts in the morning. Yeah. Yogurt's big because you got the probiotics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do blueberries or strawberries. Blueberries. Yeah. You can't go wrong with blueberries. Fantastic. I think blueberries are the only food that's part of every single diet. 
Really? There's almost no diet that's like, oh, you can't eat blueberries. That's true. It's like, well, why? It's like, oh, they have um, too much, they're too low in sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have too much pectin. Yeah. You must avoid all kinds of stuff. I avoid all kinds of stuff, but also a lot of times I'm just like, well, I'm going to feel bad later. You do do that? Yeah, because sometimes, uh, you, ever have, you ever had hot wings? Sure. When you have them, it's a thing where these are just really good. They're worth the pain later Later for the pleasure now. You do. You have that. Once in a while, yeah. I have hot wings and beer. And if I stack it with some pretzels front and back, you know, if I bookend it with something fibrous, yeah. I can kind of be okay. What's the thing that you stay away from for the longest until you finally go, all right, like, oh, I'll, um, I'll deal. I'll, I'll try probably, well, um, I pretty much don't eat any raw onions or raw, raw onions big time. I don't eat any like raw, tons of raw broccoli. Yeah, like but that. those aren't like fun. Is there something that you're like, this is actually not something I want to have? Mm, I mean, but, onions taste good. Yeah, that's true. Uh, this, for me, it's like my brain has changed. The stuff that tastes, it doesn't even taste good to me anymore because I'm thinking about the ramifications so much. So the only thing I think about are the exceptions, hot wings, I yeah. guess eating a lot of, one time I ate like five bagels in one day. During five the, bagels? Yeah, in the pandemic. They were really good bagels. So fucking good. I ate five of them. With with uh, something, a topping? I did everything. I ate one in the car on the way home. I cream ate one cheese? with like cream cheese. Yeah. Cream cheese makes me shit like crazy. It does? You know what I eat that's bad is uh, lox and cream cheese. Oh yeah, come on. What? But that shouldn't give you diarrhea, but it gives me every time. I remember going to so like- good though. God, I think I was in Boston and there was a place across the street from when I was working there and like in the mm -hmm. summer after I graduated college and you know just being I hadn't lived in a city and you walk into like one of these delis yeah. and having like the bagel toasted with cream it's the cheese best. and and then they'd put egg and bacon on it too oh. and you're like man it's like so high fat and rich yeah it's you the wouldn't fat. you wouldn't want to eat for like 12 hours after it you know I think it's the fat for me that kicks my ass yeah. like if I go to like a barbecue place and have like a a beef rib. Oh, man. How about high sugar? Does that do anything to you? Sugar is uh, I'm better with it. I think that's because I'm just so active. I burn it off. Yeah. But the, sh the high fat, oof, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. It makes that, you go boom, boom That makes you hurt. Now, your, uh, your solo show is right. going to have a bunch of stories about yeah. your bowels, right? It's actually called Minnesota Reggae Colostomy Bag. That's, that's the name, what it's called? Yeah, it's the name of the show. I, <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird title. But it's kind of what I talk about for the most part, because uh, I grew up in Minnesota, and that's where I started having colitis. I got diagnosed at age ten. That's so young. I know. I just learned that recently, actually. That's very young. That's that's very young to get it. I, I don't think I've that. ever heard of uh, colitis. No, and in child, I guess I'd never yeah. never heard it even referenced in a, for a child. I think it's pretty rare, I guess, to have ulcerative colitis when you're that young. But I talk about getting it and like all the stuff that happens, and like the treatments and stuff. And just um, obviously having a colostomy bag for, I had it for a period of time, just for I think about 10 weeks. Yeah, but that's so scary. Oh I my mean, God. It's the, it's the kind of thing where the older I get, I'm like, oh my God, that I'm so lucky not to have that anymore. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you had it, I imagine, this is a guess. Right. I bet you're eating way less than you normally did, right? Opposite, actually. You're eating more? Yeah, because I get, you get the colostomy bag. There's two surgeries, right? Your colon removed. At least for me, there's two surgeries. The first surgery, are you, are you uh, squeamishing out right now? A little bit. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, first surgery, they take your colon out completely. Yeah. And they um, uh, that's when they have the colostomy because you have it rerouted, you know? Right. And they, have to, they set something up inside of you called the J-pouch, which is basically creating like a new rectum mm -hmm. of sorts. Not an anus, a rectum, which rectum's like sort of like the loading dock for your shit in a way. Yeah. And that has to heal up before the shit can pass through it. So they, that's why you have the colostomy bag for about 10 weeks or so while it heals up. So it reroutes the shit and yeah. you have it coming out. And uh, the thing is, after that first surgery, obviously the surgery is gnarly as hell. Oh, yeah. And I was in a lot of pain and it was something where I mean, you can't be prepared for that kind of pain. You just don't know what it's How like. How old are you? I was 18. Yeah. Fucking so young. But it's better to do it young because your body's, you know, so resilient. Yeah. That's why, they ha that's why I did it then because the younger you are. Did they say you didn't have to? Like you could do this later? Well, it's definitely elective, but their whole thing was that first you're in college and um, a lot of people don't realize this, but you don't have to go to college. <laughs> I mean, you right. can like miss a semester 
and nothing happens. So How much did you miss? I missed a semester. Yeah. And uh, so that's a big thing because it's hard as an adult to schedule anything for, like you'd have to take two months off. How do you do that? Yeah. So that That's a factor. And also the resiliency of the, the younger you are, the quicker you bounce back from a surgery. So that was part of the thing too. Yeah. Have it done then. And when you have your colon taken out, because my colon was so, you know, it's sick. It's dis it's disease. Yeah. And um, it brings down the rest of the body. So that's why you, that's why colitis becomes such a, uh, or any kind of digestive disease becomes bad. It's not just the, it doesn't just affect your digestion. It affects, it has a systemic effect on the rest of the body due to just general inflammation. Yeah. So it makes you tired. It makes you absorb minerals less, all kinds of stuff. So when you get it out, and once you recover from the surgery, once I went home from the hospital, I felt a lot better. Even though I have a, a fucking bag of shit taped to my stomach, yep. I actually was eating a lot more and I was hungrier than I normally would be because uh, you don't have this thing inside of you that's causing so many problems. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's weird to be just sitting there chowing down watching TV with a colostomy bag. It's, I mean, yeah, the fact that you went through that so young too, it's like... I don't know. I think, yeah. I think it terrifies most people. I think it does, but I really think it's a product of when you're young enough, you just don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And also, I think with most medical stuff, it affects people's family a lot more than the person. You think so? Yeah, because you see someone suffering or supposedly suffering, you can't do anything for them. Yes. So you feel, you feel you have this guilt or whatever it is. But if it's me, I have an active involvement in it so I can... Sure, I feel bad, but I'm not dying, and yeah. you're getting better every day. And but your plus, family, it weighed on your family. I think probably, yeah. I Parents think, probably the most? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it was something where, yeah, I mean, I didn't feel terrible about it or anything. I, I had a, a little button I could push that helped me feel a lot better. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of nice. Let's get that kratom, dog. That's what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, it was 100% legitimate hospital kratom that's piping in. Fucking so good. It's probably what ends up making you do this. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Dude. <laughs> Man. At first I thought that guy was dead. That seems like a street performer. It kind of does the way he did the movements. Yeah. yeah. If you're listening, there was a guy asleep on a park bench and another guy approached him with uh, a cane and just tapped him and he didn't move for like four seconds. And then he just did this, like you said, almost like almost yeah. like dance movement thing. Kind of like one of those knockdown windy car yeah. guys. You know, yeah, just yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He just, uh, he's on break from his clown class. Yeah. Pretty cool. I wouldn't mind doing that. No. I mean, I would like to be able to do stuff like that, to be on, go in public and act like a, an idiot like that. Yeah. I could see you embracing a character like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really love that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah you do. But you kind of, I can't do it so much sometimes because when you get recognized, then it's like, oh, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? You feel like a real fool. Do you get recognized a lot for um, uh, like in the trucks and everything? I get recognized mostly for Superstore. Yeah. It's weird. It kind of comes and goes. When I was in Philadelphia a few weeks ago, oh my God, it was, it was weird. How many people? Just everywhere. Every single place I would go to. Wow. Maybe the show's like particularly popular I don't know there. why. It was, I, I get uncomfortable though, because it feels like. I just had, <sighs> I just for the first time had it go, a recognizing go like this. So I'm, I'm in New York. Mm -hmm. I'm in a store and I see a guy go like, you know, the face of like, oh. Yeah. And I, I registered. You know it right away. Yeah, right away. I'm like, oh, that guy's going to say something to me. Yeah. So I keep walking over here, and he, of course, he go, goes like out of his way. Wait, where are you again? A store? A store in New York. What yeah. kind of store? The like container a container store? Like a department store. Department store, like Macy's? Something like that. Okay. And he, um, he walks around. He goes, hey, are you the guy? Because I thought he was going to be like, I know you. Yeah. He goes, are you the guy that broke his arm dunking? <laughs> and I go, yeah. Uh, and then he goes why did you do that? And I go, why did I break my arm? He goes, yeah. I go, because I fell on it. And he's like, dude, it's fucking crazy. And I'm like, this is a very New York way of Was it like this. a New York guy? Yeah. It was like, hey, are you Italian? Yeah, basically, yeah. You Italian, right? 
Right? Why'd you break your arm? I'm fucking stupid. So he's like, come over here. I go, no, 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 no. Oh, I, that's such a New York guy. Like, I love that. He's though. like, get over here. I go, no, 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 no. I got to go this way. He goes, you're going the wrong way. The escalator's over here. I go, oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, I gotta go, man. I do like those New York guys like that. The guys yeah. who are like, they'll talk to the president the same as they talk like a kindergartner. Yeah. It's like, hey, hey, you like the Beach Boys? Yeah, yeah. Listen to this. Yeah, to the press. Listen to that. It's true. 9 11. God damn. Yeah. That was rough. That was so crazy. Surf's up. Yeah. <laughs> they are the most just like regular dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Or the yeah. guy said, I had one guy, this is years ago, one of the first times I was in New York, I asked the guy for directions, and he starts, another guy overhears him, and they start arguing yeah. about the directions on my behalf. That's just like the greatest, it's like a gift. Yeah. Just to see those guys. Like, you guys aren't, this isn't like a improv everywhere thing. You guys aren't cartoons in life. The New York, I always, we talk about it, like why that personality is like so I, I think it's because you're constantly around people. Yeah, you have to be honest all the time. Yeah. Because you can't yeah, you, you can't know, isolate really. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh my God, are we boring you? You're gonna Hey, sweetheart. Sit up. Hey sweetheart, come on. Take the L train, all right? Jeez. Oh my God, she fell sweetheart, you fell asleep on the train. Okay, what's your stop? Sweetheart, sweetheart, okay, sweetheart. There you go. You need At least ride? get on mic. Do you need a ride, sweetheart? Come Please. on, baby. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. Hey, girl. You need a... I'm sorry about these gentlemen, but you need someone to take you home and have sex with you? <laughs> it could be me. I'm sorry about the... I'm so sorry about these men harassing you. If you want, I can harass you <laughs> instead. <laughs> that, is, that is exactly yeah. what that is. Let, let me stop these, these men and be the guy. These guys are fucking animals. I'm sorry about these animals. Uh, would you like a gentleman to uh, put on a condom and treat you correctly? <laughs> uh, I'll go deep. Don't worry. You seeing this right here? I'm about to. Oh, fuck. I don't like this already. Really? T Fucking shit! <laughs> what is this? I got. Uh, guess what? I'm okay now. <laughs> now the uh, that level of panic. He's like, just let me. Fucking... He's alive. Yeah, he's alive. Yeah, but it, it could have been very not alive. I'm guessing. What is that? I think uh, so. It looks like it's some type of machine that sucks in. I don't know if that's like, like tubing or or paper or something. But I imagine what it does is compresses and or shreds it. You know. Something like that. And his leg got tangled in a bunch of it and he got pulled into the machine. And then it was just like, oh, he's gone. But the guy that's out of frame clearly turned it off, you know? So, hey, this is all about teamwork. And that's why we're showing you this video right now. This is why the markup is so good. Yeah. On whatever product they have. Man. The he, markup. He is, <laughs> his heart rate's probably like 190 right now. God. So fucking oh. nerve wracking. That shit scares me so much. It's fucking terrifying. Getting sucked into a thing. Oh. oh! Oh! Dude, how did he not pass? Oh, it's your teeth, right? You know that suburb of Chicago or something like that? That, you, that was so loud. Oof. So he's on a... A scooter? Was that a scooter? Or what do you call it? Yeah. I call it a scooter. Yeah. And uh, he was trying to do like a little trick, like off mm -hmm. a ledge, landed, and then just fell onto his face. That was his, that's his teeth hitting the concrete, you know? Like that's that sound. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like the best a baby. Is the, <laughs> the age. Age comes out right away. Yeah. Yeah. That is someone who's about to go, Mom! Yep. It sure is. Let's see. Um, I don't think dad's around in this case. I don't think dad's... So this guy ended up, uh, he passed out, broke his tooth, and got a hole in his lip. Okay. Yeah, still funny. Still funny, but pretty good one. I've never had anything like that happen to me. Thank fucking God. Uh, oh, man. Let's see. Oh, this might be gnarly. I don't know if this can be... <laughs> uh, no, no. Oh. Ooh. That hurt. 
That probably hurt. What hit? I think it was just his legs, right? Seems yeah, like it was very close to being really fucking bad. Yeah, yeah. It was like it's one of those massive. It's a you know, scissor lift, right? Or what do you call it? A but, cherry picker? It's like one of those huge trampolines, yeah. you know? And he's flying up like 30 feet in the air, it looks like. That's the kind of tramp you can't buy in America. Yeah, you cannot. And then. No, no. Oh, that's oh, not so bad. Not so bad yeah. at all. But that's like tailbone, right? Isn't but that... imagine if his head went through there. Oh, yeah. And then that's it. Next thing you know, body comes down. Yeah. And, and then it goes stays. back up again. That's the thing. It would go right back up. <laughs> and just spraying everywhere. Unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Bunch of blood everywhere. Ooh, that would have been a good shot, too. God damn. Mm-mm. I heard some ER doctor say that. There's like the three three things. He just finished his ER rotation. Yeah. So the three things he will not be doing anymore in life mm-hmm. is um, using a trampoline. He'll never use a trampoline ever again. Yep. Never honk at someone. Yep. On the road. And he said, what's the most obvious thing? Some shit about, God, it's the most obvious one. It's something that no one does. I forgot it. I'll remember it. Maybe it's being a redneck. No, it's not. <laughs> Honk, it, honking can lead to. Yeah, because like people get in the, you know, are you, why, are you in the, why you lost your leg? Oh, it's because I honked at some psycho who decided to follow me for two hours and, yeah. and try to kill me. It's so crazy, too, that... Um, Honking is so normal in so many cities and parts of the world. Yeah. It's just like a part of everything. Not and it here, is a thing though. in the States. It is different here. I don't know. It's really strange. You can only give like a dunk, but if you go like honk, somebody yeah. they're just like, oh, yeah, it's time to kill someone. I heard like Chicago is a really super honky. Like uh-huh. people don't give a shit about honking there. New York. The New York fucking, honking all the time. All the time. Yeah. People don't honk here that much. No. Yeah. I've seen, I've, dude, I made a. I was turning left uh, from Laurel Canyon onto Magnolia in the valley. Right, and not well. Okay, there's a there's a guy in a convertible in front of me, a heavy set dude in a small convertible. In front of him is a car, well, not particularly memorable, but like there's two people in there. The guy's in the intersection. The big guy in the convertible honks like go. Right? Like there's Is it like a yellow light or just I think it was still green. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, go. When the car in front, the car that got honked at turns, he pulls over and he lets that convertible pass him. Uh oh. And that convertible turns into the first parking lot. Which I also turn into because I happen to be going to the same place, which yeah. is the bank. And so I pull in and I see I see it all happening. Like I see the story playing out. So I park, I get out, mm-hmm. and I just notice what I had seen. And then the big guy has parked, and then that car comes behind and parks next to him. And then the guy gets out. It's this big black dude. And his lady is the passenger, and she's just sitting there like. And he goes, the fuck do you honk at me for? And the guy's like, what? and you can tell now he's like, like kind of like what you're saying. He's like. Um, well, he goes, and he doesn't really say anything. Oh. And then that guy that makes it worse, I think. comes around to the driver's side, mm-hmm. stands over him. He's like, yeah, you honk at me because you're a miserable fat fuck. I'll beat your fucking ass like that. And I was like, you know, just, it's just, and I'm just like at the ATM like, <gasps> like. Show. Yeah, this is a real Free show. show. Yeah. And that guy, the big dude just sat in that car. He didn't, he didn't get out waited and eventually the other dude got in his car and left and you know that guy's heart was just yeah i mean pounding compounding i have a new technique if that ever happens to me which is new technique if somehow i ever fuck up and honk or whatever someone tries to confront me because of a road rage incident yeah i when they come around to talk to me um if i ever try to talk to me i'm like oh hey how are you oh hey that's car that's a great car you got God, I can't figure out how to drive. I'm just trying to get over. Is it is McDonald's over here or something? I just want to. I'm so god dang like, hungry. What? Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I was me. Oh crap! Yeah. I hit it with my elbow. I was trying to get a tape out of the back seat. All right, man. You like yeah. music? No, yeah. Hold on a second. Can I ask you a question? So look at this. I got this paper printed out, but you can't. What number is this? Is this a nine? <laughs> just do that. Yeah. 
And it goes from rage to mercy. I know like, yeah. oh, this guy's fucking. This yeah. guy needs some help. A lot of help. Not a little bit, a whole lot. I think it would work though. Yeah, it probably would. It'd be fun to find out, to test it. <laughs> um, can you describe this? This is a uh, this is a level up of a barber clip. It's got a it's a woman. I think it's a I hope it's a woman with a a trimmer taped to her leg and she's doing a guy's she's taping up a guy's sideburns. He's got a hole on that Fucking side now. Hey man. How did he stay so serious? He's, that's what he gets paid for. <laughs> And then does he have himself on his shirt? I just noticed that. There's something about that that only some people do. There's something about the name on your, the self on your shirt, which is like, wow. Yeah. This barber shit, man, it's out of control. There's some stuff I see on Instagram and TikTok where it's unnatural, the amount of barbering they're doing. Yeah. It's like, it comes down to like a, like they're using like tape and all kinds of shit. It's it's really crazy. And this dude is like, this is some serious shit right here. You know? Like that stare is like, this is not a joke. This is real. This is real life. This is fucking real. And if you come to my barber shop, this will be your life. You know? That's what this really is. He should launch into a commercial right now. Hi. Yeah. I'm hey. Jimmy Jason. This is... <laughs> This is butt cut. <laughs> this is butt. You come down to butt cut barbers, you're going to get fresh, clean. Fucking holes on the side of his head. A yeah. washed, a freshly washed ass. A freshly washed ass. The cleanest ass in America will trim you up, get you looking fresh, tight, clean. Did you ever see, um, uh, what's it called? Hold on. Batman? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen the new one all the way through, but yeah. Did you ever see Machines Within? What? The song. The song. I'm trying to sing my song. I'm trying to sing my song. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go. I haven't seen this. I have another beat down for you. I try to practice, practice my um, song. This is my introduction to my song. Coming at you. Uh, here we go. I'll sing it. Machines were thin, machines were thin. They got a gun and got a gun. Yeah, I got a gun, Terminator gun. Yeah, machines were thin, machines were thin. T16, 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 100%. T16, machines were thin, machines were thin. Trying to rake my rap, trying to make my rap. Trying to practice on my flow, trying to practice on my flow. Machines were thin, machines were thin. With oh, shit. The street. I don't give a F. F the Doesn't haters. curse. F oh. all the haters. Much love, no hate. Machines were thin. You get it. Uh, this is the kind of guy you could uh, practice some magic tricks on. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you, you, you would be like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's got two hats on? What is that? Second hat? Yeah. Machines were thin. Machines were thin. It's really, it's a machine. It's going to go. Do you have any of the songs that they made from that? People made songs with that? Yeah. Because we realized all he needed was a producer. Oh, so we yeah. So put a call out to, Beat you know, makers? No? We don't have the server here. Yeah, but what about YouTube? Yeah, we'll look for it. Yeah, machines so. Machines Within. Yeah, Machines Within. So we, we said, like, hey, do you want to. Um, you reached out? Well, no, well, we did, actually. We contacted okay. him. And did we he made, reply? He did reply. Okay. Um, he was into it, I will say. Okay. Um, did you find, uh, yeah? Machines with them. This is our highlight showing yeah. off some of the remixes back in the day. Oh, yeah. So maybe we can hear some of them here. Is this the only uh, version of his Machines with them? Or does he have like ultimate? Well, this is like, this is the bones of it. And then the people started to take the audio and remix songs. You know? But he like, hasn't practiced and done a better version of it, like a few more lyrics I don't maybe? think he, well, he has new songs. Okay. So that's what, if that's what you're asking for, yeah, he does have new songs. Um, maybe we can... Machines with the... Play. Stuff in the shower. I always think a real producer okay. could really do... Yeah, see? Some of them... This is like... Yeah, got a gun. Terminator gun. Yeah, got a gun. Yeah. Terminator gun. Got a gun, got a Terminator gun. Yeah. 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 This is dark. Terminator. I want to do a version of this. Yeah. 
thin. Machines were thin. Machines were thin. Machines were thin. So you can take this and make this a refrain and do a verse over top of it. Machines yeah. Thin. It's a different approach. Got a bunch yeah, of yeah, machines inside. Yeah. I got a bunch of machines inside. Look back, cause yeah. I'm never gonna die. Got a big old Terminator gun. No fun. Watch out. Spray you with a bunch of cum. <laughs> Stop by. If you want to die, I like come it. to me with a terminal. Yeah. Just send me that beat, and I'll, I'll, send, it, I'll send you something back that's I slick. Think, I think we know one of the next moves here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he's one of the, he, just, uh, he just dropped a new one on us. Um, oh, great. Here we go. Blah, blah, blah. Blippity, blippity, blah, blah, blah. Blippity, blippity, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everyone in the dark? The blah, 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 blah. I'm that vampire one. I'm the lonesome one. You got that ghost trap. You got that ghost trap. So he really believes in like simple lyrics, you know? Yeah, he believes in it. Yeah. He's, he, it's something he believes in. It's part of his, uh, part of his style. Yeah. It's, some, it's a and choice. And then he's like, it's a choice. And then it's like, hey, let me layer this later. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what's happening there. I don't know if I would have the TV at full volume in the background if I was laying my lyrics down, but also, it is a choice. I don't know about having that tit light in the back, whatever that, it's like, yeah. a, it's like a breast on the wall. What is that? I've been practicing on my music, practicing on my music. Blah, blah, blah. Beep, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. You got that ghost drop. You got that ghost drop. Trying to work on my song. Trying to work on my song. Making my ma- mm. making my shine. Making my shine, y'all. Making my shine, y'all. Blah, blah, blah. This is the kind of thing where I feel like there's an older woman on the phone in the background. She's like, Jeff, I'm on the f- Stop it. Be quiet. He's doing his blah, blah. Keep it down. I'm on the phone. <laughs> Go practice your song in the garage. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go to Subway and practice your gra- your rap. Yeah, he actually we uh, we partnered with him actually on a on a shirt. You did? Yeah, he was he was a partner. Yes, I swear to God. I haven't caught up with uh, a lot of your people. Yeah. Well, this was his his he originally appeared a while back. Yeah. You gotta have. Wait, is that in is that ICP or is that? Yeah. It's not Crow, not the Crow. I think it's ICP because he's a big ICP guy. What is the definitive difference between the Crow and ICP then? At this, I want to know. This seems like a collab, you know, yeah. Crow X ICP. That's true. Yeah, it seems like a bit of a a collab. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Hmm. I mean, um, because he's got the mouth thing like the Crow, right? And the eyes are kind of there. That's uh, what's his name? Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee, yeah. Yeah. Was that a good movie? I think it's yeah. it's beyond good or bad, right? It's yeah. Just, it's just... You have to be like, it's a movie. It's a movie, yeah. Juggalo. Hmm. Yeah. It is kind of a mashup of the two. You have a really good See, eye for that. You can't get stuff by me. I know. No. I tried to get Machines Within Guy by you. And no, you I was not. like, I called that out. You did call it out. I was quick to recognize, oh, I don't think this is ICP makeup. I believe this is a different subgenre, Tom. Yeah, it is. Tom, I believe this is an older reference. Fuck, I think you're right. This but he is an ICP fan. We've confirmed that for sure. So maybe he's both fans of both. Big surprise. I wonder maybe if he's, he's got a, a big makeup guy. Hatchet guy tattoo. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you, I, ever, did you have tattoos? I have one tattoo. One? Yeah. What is it? It's hatchet guy. No. Hatchet guy. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have tattoos? Oh, I don't have any tattoos. Oh. No. Why not? Um, I don't know. And I've gotten to middle age now where I'm like, I wonder if I should, I've, I've had those days where I'm like, yeah, maybe I get a tattoo. Oh, my God. So you know what you do? Do what? a second vial of Kratom and go in there. Get in. Dude, if I went Just in there on Kratom, I would leave with more than one. I'll tell you that right now. I thought about, honestly, I thought about getting a kiss on my neck. Really? Yeah. Could you imagine if I walked in here with a kiss on my neck? How big? You know, so you can see it. Yeah. Right there. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, would, get, I would get in fights then. I that's heartthrob stuff, for sure. I think that I would have, like, guys want to fight me maybe? I yeah. don't know. Yeah, people would definitely make comments. What would they say? The fuck's that all about? And I would say, what did you say? Yeah. And that smile right there, <laughs> it's kind of scary. Yeah. What did you say? I didn't hear you. Say it again. 
Why you got my girl looking at your neck like that? Oh, what? What'd you say? <laughs> Nothing. Hey, don't worry. I won't hurt you. Oh, that's a good one. Hey, I'm not following you. I'm just going the same way. And by the way, and you can go like, I'll be out of here in a few. You just throw him the neck. I'll be out here. I'll be out here right quick. I'll be out here right quick now. <laughs> I was thinking about doing the full arm sleeve, you know? Oh, really? No. No, the sleeve. Sleeve's not working anymore. There's the, um, now they offer actual dissolvable tattoos. That what they, do you mean dissolvable? They, they, they dissolve on their own because of the type of ink they use. So you get a, per, it's, it looks like, you know, it's not going to yeah. come off in the shower, but it'll dissolve like over a year. Oh my God, really? So it's like a, it's an extended temporary Damn, tattoo. Damn, I kind of like that idea because that way you can try it on. There's also the, the white ones where yeah. it looks like, um, you know. But that doesn't look good on white dudes. No? I think it I looks know. like, it's nothing there. You can't see anything. Well, it's like a hidden, it's like a secret. Yeah. I a secret. I did this character on a TV show a couple years ago named Lil Pouty. There we go. Yeah, it is just like. That's like, that's like uh, yeah. chick goth stuff right kind there. Of. I feel like. It's not even goth. That's like next level uh, how to upgrade your Coachella look. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like uh, just expensive bullshit. Yeah. Oh. That's true. That snake looks pretty cool. I gotta say, that looks pretty cool. It does? Where? Yeah. That also looks kind of gross in a weird way. It looks like, uh, oh, I have to check out this weird scar I have. Yeah. That's also like a darker hand, right? Or am I seeing this wrong? It looks raised. Doesn't look raised? It does, yeah. Yeah, it looks it raised. Does. I, had a, I had a bunch of face tats on and neck tats because they take so long to come off. Yeah. So they were shooting over a couple of days to keep them on. <clears throat> I was out in the world looking like me, but I had the tats. Yeah. Get a lot of attention. You do? Yeah. What happened? Like d Just like attention, like um, people want to talk to you. Really? Like um, ladies who work at security. Like, <laughs> like, you know, ladies who work at like the, when you check in the gate. Yeah. They're like really nice to you. R oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They're like, this person is volatile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're into you. Well, yeah, I mean- the volatile is the right word for lots of tats on the face and neck. For you're sure. Like, this person doesn't give a fuck to a degree. They want in. Yeah. yeah. That or it's like a thing. Also, I feel like it's a, it shows you're just, you're into that lifestyle. You're so committed that um, that's what you do. Sure. That mm -hmm. seems to me why people get them. Not why, but like why it works, why rappers get them. Because then it's, well, can't do anything else now. Can't, yeah, yeah. I'm committed. Wait, what's yours? Do you do you mind saying it or is it? No, it's a little crawfish. Here. Oh, you do. Okay, yeah. okay. Got a crawfish. By the way, shoulder. I have not. I've only given um, kind of a brief um, overview of not sharing details, but like hinted at the fact that I shot a project that right. is um, my yeah. own project that I wrote and produced and was into. And I said I brought in amazing talent uh, on it and you're one of the people that I don't think I've announced it yet why, you, why would you it? move when I said that That's why weird. is she moving she should have settled in by now is she farting over there you know what <laughs> just sit up straight Jesus. come on sit up straight sweetheart is this your stop Hey, sweetheart, are you going to Brooklyn? You probably go, she's probably going to Brooklyn. Probably she's going to Brooklyn. Probably going to Brooklyn, Cuca. You want to get off at Morgan Avenue, okay? There's a great pizza place there. Tell him Jimmy told you to stop by. Not Joey. Not Joey, okay? Tell him the meatball is a comedy. The guy who runs it and owns it told you to stop by. <laughs> Give you a little something. He'll let you use the bathroom. Don't worry about it. Do your makeup. You got a little something. Um, <clears throat> what's your project, though? No, the one that you're in, I'm saying. Right, but you uh, haven't announced it at all? No, just, I've just... I told people that I have, um, I had the idea to just make something that I wanted to make right. with the end goal just being that I made something I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. And so I shot this thing, I funded it, um, and you are in it. So yep. thank you very much. They don't know anything yet. I can't, you know, I don't want to tell. I don't How long give it until it's going to be, uh, um, well, I, I guess think, it depends, right? If you, yeah, I think that, that, uh, um, the majority of everything will be cut by, um, probably late next month. Okay. Um, I saw the I saw the first cut of of one of the things we shot, and then I have another soundstage day of like really. Yeah, I have a soundstage day. So you're not done. I mean, I have one day. 
Um, right. But that'll be cut in there too. It'll be a few months still. It'll be a few months. But it's I'm still be, super stoked about it. Are you going to put it out for like uh, like YMH Live or something like that? That's one of the ideas. So I told people that I work with that um, mm. obviously what I was doing and they were like, oh, we want to show it to people for yeah. like streamers and all this stuff. Your reps. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, but the original plan was just to go straight to like a YMH live event. <clears throat> straight it. to stream. Yeah. So I guess, I guess we'll show that to them and see if they are interested in it. But if, if the people who watch the, this, if the reps are interested in it or show it to the no, no, sales people. Yeah. Show it to like right. buyers. You know? yeah. yeah. That's the goal, right? Cause you always want to, well, the goal would be, I mean, whatever, like, if if doing a YMH Live type event allows me to do more of this, meaning just make my own right. stuff, then I would say that's the goal. The goal is just to be able to make more. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know that getting it on one of the big streamers is per se the goal, unless it leads to more of it being done. I'd like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd like it. <laughs> I'd sorry. like it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I think a lot of people like it, though. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> it's always nice when more people can see something, I think. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what these J's have to say. They usually decide. Uh, the J's in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're my dynamite J's. Dynamite J's? Yeah. You got a couple in there now, huh? Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, you got to worry a little bit, though, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're just like contractors. You just don't know what's up. <laughs> They always switch things on you at the last second. Yeah, they're complaining like, oh, my daughter, she's so tired. Um, oh, I'm just doing this for cost. I'm just doing this for cost. That's the best thing. Do you have a contractor like that? Yeah, ha had. Yeah. I'm not making, John, I'm not making, I'm not making any money off this. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, oh so shouldn't you not do this? Wouldn't you not want to do this? Build, don't build a fence if you're not making any money. No, I'm not. I'm not making any money off this at all. No. Mm. Will you be surprising me with costs I didn't know about at some point in this? Well, I did some. I surprised him. Well, I was like, "Oh, you got to fix this. This is not up to code. You got to need to put some new bars in here." And he's like, "Okay." And I did that. It's like you got to put this. I said two layers on the top rail. Sends back the guys. So I had to send him back twice to fix the stuff. And so, he tried to charge you though for no, that. No, I oh. was like, "You can't charge you for that because yeah. this is part of the whole thing initially." Yeah. I hate that though. I hate. I don't like him to do that. I hate the contractors are just. Oh. I know. Do you ever use the wife thing? They're like, oh, look. I think it's great, but my fucking wife. Okay, <laughs> she every morning she wakes me up at six a.m. and say, "Look, it's slanted. It's slanted." I'm like, I can I just sleep? So, if you could just make it straight, you so know, I can get some so sleep I can here. Live, yeah. Believe me, it's it's the D word coming. But until then, <laughs> uh, if we can just get this straight, please. The uh, the fucking what was the guy he did? Oh, he at the very end we had a bathroom remodel. This is like a, a while back right. when we lived here. He's not there, and the last day one of his it's actually his kid goes like here's a piece of paper. It's just like the, the last uh, invoice, and it was ten grand. I was like, what is this for? Just like add on things, things that changed along the way. Mm. And I'm like, that's a very round number. Yeah. And then I looked through the, and one of the things was like, I go, it was no. itemized, right? Itemized, but it was just like the wood box that you chose, 500, the thing, like all these, like just, right. I go, well, what is this one? And it was like a grand, or two grand. And it was like, cha you change the original de um, design for the bathroom. I'm like, what are you talking about? And the, so what? I go, what, what is this? And the guy's like, yeah, you didn't. He actually said, I have it in an email, which is amazing. He's like, you didn't have the, the design for the hot and the cold water in the shower. We added that later. I'm like, did you think I wouldn't want hot and cold water in the shower? He's like, you changed. I go, no, that's not. That's so, not a some thing. people, they don't, they want, they want cold. Some people want cold. It's it was popular. so it's crazy. Very popular. And I got so aggressive in the emails. Like, oh my God. I got so aggressive. Um, I can't do it. Yeah. I have to do, I told myself, because I got in a screaming match with this guy, this fence contractor, the Israeli guy on the phone, because he said he'd send someone over to fix this dumb, tiny thing, right? Mm -hmm. He said he would, and I'm waiting for him. I call him, like, are they coming? It's just the smallest thing. I just want yeah. you to put a little lock on there so when the wind blows, it doesn't swing the gate open. And he's like, um, what do you mean? I'm like, 
you you said it. I'm, I'm not I'm not lying. You said it. And he starts getting all defensive about it. And this is in the middle of COVID when everyone's psycho, right? So yeah. I'm just holding on to this little thing. It's all I have in my life is getting him to do this fucking fence for me. And uh, kind of screaming match with him on the phone. And he's like, well, why do you want me to do it? I'm like, because your, your work is good. It's good work, okay? It's good work. I'm not... And eventually, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll send someone over there. And I'm like, I'll, I'll pay. I'll pay $100 for this just to put a little bolt on there. And afterwards, I'm just shaking because I don't want to do this. Yeah. It's not me. Yeah. I told myself after that, I'm never having a confrontation with someone ever again. I'm either going to be like, okay, I'm paying extra just so this is enjoyable. Yeah. It's like a thing. I just paid some fucking guy today to haul away a bunch of stuff. He told me how much it costs. Like... I could have got this done for a third of the price. No problem. Yeah. But what am I going to do? Like get pissed? I it's know. like, eh, it's over. Yeah. Gotta it's kind of like, it's kind of like paying taxes. Yeah. You know, you just got to go like, you pay taxes and you just move forward. If you just sit there and like vent or think that it's, you know, like, I can't believe it's like, what's that's you your just have thing? to move forward. Like, yeah. Oh, well, sure. I'm going to build a tax shelter. Yeah, yeah. My thing is not paying this. Have you ever had a friend tell you? That like like a friend who does not work in accounting go like hey you know you don't have to pay taxes um I had a, I have one I of my friends known. do that to me he was like you know you don't have to pay taxes and I was like what are you talking about and he was like you don't and I go like which taxes like income tax and stuff and he was like you don't have to pay it and I go no you you do he's like you really don't and I go no well, you don't that's called tax evasion yeah I mean you can it's a crime no he just is, watch this hour and a half long YouTube video yeah you have to check this out and I go is this what you're doing are you doing this because <laughs> This is not going to end well for you. I hope you know. I did have a guy when I first moved to LA when I was working. I had a normal job. I took advice. I got someone else's tax guy to do my taxes uh -huh. for two years in a row. He gets you a ton, a ton of, ton back, like yeah. a ton back because I was a subcontractor, right? And uh, a bunch of other people used him in the office. They had kids and stuff, so I think it must be fun. I don't remember what happened. I think I got audited or something or I decided to switch to a different tax guy. And um, I show the new legitimate tax guys this thing and he's sitting there with me just you know the, the dorkiest tax guy classic dorky tax guy with the glasses and he's looking at it and goes um uh do you so do you own a boat i'm like no he's like, okay and how about these um where where are your uh, apartments that you own I'm like i don't own apartments and he's like okay one second hey uh Jim, come come look at this. And all the guys in the office come look at this thing. He's like, see this right here? And I'm like, I don't fucking know what this means. <clears throat> the guy said I owned a boat. Oh, that's how he was getting you so much money. Yeah, I get tons back. And I got audited one year. So it ends up, ended up breaking even. Yeah. But man, that is fucking like crazy shit. When I got here, and I'm, I mean, I'm just like you at that time, like a subcontractor or whatever. Yeah, and so they pay you basically cash you don't, yeah they don't take it out and i get and i'm like i need to do taxes yeah. so somebody refers me to this guy in glendale and uh that's so funny I, I meet with him i'm you know i bring my stuff i have receipts for things and he's like um he goes so uh this year uh did you get um did you get a bunch of haircuts and i'm like <laughs> and i go yeah he goes every few weeks and i go yeah he goes probably like what 35 40 bucks a time you tip him i'm like yeah and he'd write it down and then he goes um he go, uh, do you uh, do you donate to charity this year? And he'd go, like that. He would nod. And I was like, yeah. Uh, He's like, how much do you think you donate? Probably like 500,000, something like that. And I go, yeah. that sounds right. 500,000? <laughs> no, 500, okay. 1,000. Like, and then like every, the whole time he would just make suggestions and then he would just nod at me. And I was going, oh, okay, yeah, I think so. Anyway, I mean, it still was, it didn't amount to much because I wasn't making much, but he right. was just trying to like just write off everything. It was, you see that ridiculous. movie, The Accountant, with Ben Affleck? Yeah. Remember, he has that couple in there, and he's like, does your husband have a space that he would work in possibly outside the home? And they're like, no. It's like, are you sure he doesn't have a space that he might be working in? <laughs> they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you out here. God, I wish I was that guy. Oh, my God. No. To know all that stuff? All tax code? Yeah. Buying art. Did you watch uh, Worst Roommate Ever? I didn't see it, no. There's, uh, great, did you watch right? that, Native? I did not, no. It, it's really good. It's on Netflix. And, you call him um, Native now? Sometimes we call him Native, okay. yeah. Um, 
sometimes we call them Nevada, whatever, you know, Nevada. as long as it has an N. Um, <laughs> uh, Vandal. So there is a, um, it, it profiles these horror stories of roommates. Right. But like the, the finale is profiling a guy who did really well in school, went to law school. Seems like he had some type of mental break. Uh-huh. Like, like, you know, like when a, a guy who's smart, but just something yeah. like really smart. And one too thing smart. that he, too smart. One thing that he learned was all like the state laws about being a tenant and like all the, everything. Oh, right. So he became this menace roommate. What he would do is, you know, you would put out, I'm looking for a roommate. Right. He would show up, be very pleasant. You'd be like, yeah, I think this guy's great. He went to law school. He's, you know, he tutors people and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And then he would become like this totally different guy. And he knew how long it would take. To get evicted? Yes. And like he knew the whole legal process. And he, but it was, it was a nightmare. It was just, it reminded me of like having specialized knowledge yeah. in something that allows you to exploit it. And it was, it was horrible. I mean, you, you, he just, and then as they're telling you like the big story, they would flash back to other times he had done it to other people. They're profiling all these people that were like, this guy ruined my life. That's his whole thing is ruining people's lives? As a, as a roommate, yeah. Oh, it's like he gets off on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like he's like a uh, a congressman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's funny. He was such a piece of shit. Um, but he's good. Yeah. Well, I think he's, I hope he's dead. Um, Johnny Pemberton, tickets are available on your site? Yeah, should be on my site, johnnypemberton.dog. That dog. You also should check out my YouTube. I'm putting out a bunch of videos. A bunch of videos. And of Wayne. if I may say so, we are all huge, huge fans of your T-shirts. Oh, right on. Um, uh, I sent you that picture. Yeah. Uh, that I've had it on at work. I've got a couple. I got a Moderna one. I think you do. Mad- yeah. Moderna, Moderna Metallica. Right. Um, yeah, those are, most of them are for sale on uh, Instagram through my shop. Most okay. of them. Some of them are too hot They're, for TV kind yeah, of thing, yeah, you know? So yeah. they go on, I sell them at shows though, all live shows. There, you, got a, you got a Raytheon one on today, right? Yeah, this one you can buy online. What right is that one? What's it say underneath it? It's just uh, Raytheon Technologies. Oh, Technologies, okay. You recognize this logo? Uh, what logo is that? It's Costco. Oh. Oh, sorry, it's uh, Kirkland, Kirkland Signature. Yeah. Kirkland Signature, yeah. Um, have you ever gotten cut. heat for a shirt from like? A little bit of heat. A little, little bit? Yeah, a little bit of heat. Not like real heat. Yeah. Just like, hey, uh, stop it. Yeah. I was like, okay, we'll stop. Yeah. And uh, I think it's probably from a hater. It's got to be, right? Probably. But you've forgotten heat? Because um, I feel like you should. <laughs> and I think about something, one of those ones I did for you. Yeah. Um, I don't think I... <laughs> we'll talk about it off air. We'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> uh... Thanks for coming today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Always great to see you. Um, Don't forget, see Johnny live. Uh, Check out his YouTube, get a shirt, and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next. Uh, By the way, I had a blast with you today. Great job. It's always good to see you. I know uh, you're having problems, but um, it's going to be okay. And the sweater is beautiful. It's a great sweater. It looks uncomfortable, but you know, that's the price of fashion. Price of fashion. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Walking down the street, introduction to my song I got a gun, got a Terminator gun Machines within Machines within Practice on my rhyme, practice on my flow G16100 Machines within Machines within F all the haters, much love, no hate I don't know what's real and what's fake I don't give an F Walking down the street Hatchet crew singing Happy Halloween Working on my rhyme, working on my song I got a gun, got a Terminator gun Machines within Machines within Did you like that full episode of your mom's house? Are your jeans as high and tight as they can be? I doubt it. Watch some more clips, dude. Look at that one. Watch that one right here. Or maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe <laughs> Maybe you should subscribe. That way, every time a new video gets posted, you'll be notified. Stay in the know, jeans. Subscribe now. <laughs>